Glory to God. Dealing with something amazing. On the broadcast. Blessings to all of you all. How many of you all enjoyed the video on YouTube? Kings chapter 16, verse 15. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 16, let's go to verse 2. It says, 20 year old. 20 years old was a Ahaz. Ahaz, when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. And he made his son pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen. I want you to hear this. You see that there? Ahaz, he doesn't follow in the way of King David. He follows in the way of abominations. And as a result, he has his son pass through the fire. Now, I want you to see how in Genesis, God told Abraham to offer up his son. And the way that he was going to offer up his son was set his son on fire. Which is the very thing that was called an abomination. And Abraham never goes to God and says, Lord, this is an abomination. Why are you telling me to do this? Not one time. I'm showing you the difference between pride and humility. Pride often questions. That's why you have to know which aspect of questions are you in. There's a questioning where you want to learn. There's a questioning where you want to get it right with God. And there's a questioning of arrogance and pride. And there's a questioning that says, I know better than you, God. You really don't know what you're doing. Let me help you out because I'm a little smarter than you. I was reading this text here and the Lord told me, he says, son, notice that having your son pass through the fire was called an abomination. But yet, this is the instruction that God gives to Abram to offer up his son. He's getting the altar ready for the fire to set his son on fire, to cut his son, and to do this very thing that was called an abomination because God told him to do it. Um, I want everybody that watch that got access to it. I want you to watch a movie called The Binding. Everybody, especially you, Hainsley and Zipporah. Everybody that has access to it, I want you to watch a movie called The Binding. Um, it's not a long movie. But it has a priest in there. And I want you to watch a movie called The Binding. It's not a long movie. It's not three hours or anything like that. I think it's like an hour and something. If you can, watch the movie called The Binding. 
I'll get back to you and I'll give you further details after this broadcast or tonight. I'll give you further details tonight. But just note that down. In this month, as this month is ending, let me see if I can watch the binding. Or going into early June. Now, let me say this. The Lord tells Abram to do something that was considered an abomination. Now, watch this. But where does God break Abraham into the raw anointing? Through the seed principle. Listen to me, people of God. Listen, 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 listen. How does he break him open in freedom from tradition? How does he get him to step over into unusual submission? Rare surrender. Extraordinary willingness. He delivers him from tradition through the, the, the channel of the seed principle. He doesn't tell Abram, I want you to go into your closet and pray for 30 days. Or I want you to go into your closet and I want you to fast for 40 days. He tells Abraham to offer up his seed. And while he's doing this, every mindset that he had, he has to leave it in order to offer up this seed. Watch, I want to say this to you. Abraham really left his father's house when he offered up his seed. Because his father's house never did that. If Terah had offered up his seed, God would have been telling his seed to get away from him. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you catch what I just said there? If Terah had offered up his seed, like Abraham offered up his seed, You notice what happened to Isaac in Genesis 26? God was saying, your father obeyed me. What God really saying, listen, Isaac, he done offered you up to me. So you better sit right here in the famine and sow your way out. Because <laughs> there's a bit on your life. And use a target. You don't really got to say so if you're going to run from city to city, state to state, person to person, organization to organization, facility to facility, assignment to assignment. You don't got that right because you've been offered up. That's what God was basically telling him in Isaiah in uh, Genesis 26. So if Terah offered up Abraham. God would have never told Abraham to leave Terah's household. Wow. Wow. Which gives you the revelation that Terah was not a sower. And Terah did not honor God. Because if God has to tell Abraham to get away for Abraham to receive that sowing anointing, that honorable anointing, that anointing to truly worship God and to listen to the raw anointing of the spirit. If God has to tell Abram to get away from him, that shows you how bound terror was, how lost terror was, how traditional terror was, how stubborn terror was, how witchy terror was. God don't have to tell you to get away from somebody unless they're a witch. So we know hereby that Tara was a witch. Tara was in witchcraft. And Abraham has to leave this witchcraft to become obedient. Because witchcraft is the opposite of obedience. So he has to leave where the witchcraft 
is originated, the origin of witchcraft. He has to leave it in order for him to become obedient to God. Oh my God. So saints, do you understand that the blessing of Abraham ah, is an anointing to leave witchcraft alone, to leave witches alone, to leave the area of rebellion alone or anything that will make you rebellious. It is the empowerment to get away from anything that makes you weak to sin or weak to temptation or weak to disobedience. The Holy Spirit. I feel the anointing going down my hands. The Holy Spirit made a blessing. From Abraham life. And reserved this blessing for all that will receive King Jesus. And said I'll put this blessing on you. The blessing of Abraham has come upon. Those that have received Jesus. I'll put the blessing on you. So I'll put this. Power that keeps on increasing on you. To keep separating yourself from traditional people. To keep on resisting the devil. To keep on avoiding dustiness. To keep on submitting yourself to God. To keep on offering up your seed. To keep on yielding to the raw anointing. The blessing of Abraham is also a grace to listen to God in ways that other people have ignored him. Oh, this powerful. Oh, this powerful and this brand new. This brand new. The blessing of Abraham is the ability to listen to God in areas that people have ignored him. And watch this. The blessing of Abraham is to see God holy as holy in areas where people called him unclean. The same areas where people called him filthy because the blessing of Abraham is on you. And, and you have a righteousness mantle on your life. Oh, my karata, karama karata, repeke romoko ropoko. You have a righteousness mantle on your life. Guess what happens? The righteousness mantle causes you to say that he's holy when people say he's unclean. What happened to Peter when he said, Peter says, I will not kill and eat. This is unclean. And God says, whatever I say is clean. It's clean. What's going on here, people of God? Peter was not operating in the blessing of Abraham. Oh, my God. You never heard this before. This brand new. You get to hear the Lord talking to you in a fresh way in JHM. This ministry is different. You don't have to wait 21 days to hear the Lord. I'm talking to you right now. Peter did not receive the blessing of Abraham yet. That's why he was not empowered to see God as holy with something that looked unclean. When the blessing is on you, you leave the place of judging God. Oh, my God. And you step into the place of adjusting to God. It's not judgment is adjustment. And you become flexible to the spirit of the Lord instead of trying to get the spirit of the Lord to become flexible to you. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, Lord. The blessing of Abraham wasn't on Peter yet. Now, saints, I'm going to say this, and I never heard this before, but my angel Arrhenius just handed me a scroll. And my angel Arrhenius just said this to me. The reason why Thomas was doubting the resurrection, 
Because the blessing of Abraham had not come upon him yet. This is why he was doubting. Said, I need to see the holes in his hands. I need to see the holes in his feet. I need to see him before I believe. Because the blessing of Abraham didn't come on him yet. See, the blessing of Abraham causes you to believe Jesus and believe his prophets. Huh? Because saints, Melchizedek, the secret about Melchizedek is that he not only was a high priest, he was a high prophet. Ah! So, so, so Abraham being a prophet was able to discern. I have to believe this man if I'm going to believe God too, because this Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It feels good to be anointed. I wonder what that be like, that be like, that be like. It feels good to be anointed. It feels good to be anointed. It feels good to be anointed. Do you know why I'm still here? Because I'm anointed. I'm not the fake anointed ones. I am anointed. Why does God keep talking as me. Now, I ain't even say through me. I said as me. Because I am anointed. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Saints, let me just say this. I want to say this just real quickly. Um, by the way, I love how you are honor me. I love it. I am a God and I love to be worshipped. I worship God in spirit and in truth. I celebrate him. The Holy Spirit has full control of my life. He has made me a God. I love to be worshipped. I enjoy being worshipped. But at the same token, I receive that honor from God because he gave it to me. I reap what I sow. If I sow worship, I reap worship. What do you think happens when God promotes you? He worships you. He's celebrating you. He's giving you what you want. It's called worship. So God worships you too. Now, let me just say this. People of God. Understand. Um, let me say it like this. If Jesus was on earth, right? You wouldn't say, hey, Jesus in the flesh. <laughs> you know, it would sound crazy, right? Think about it. If Jesus was on earth, right, you wouldn't say, hey, Jesus in the flesh, uh, could you heal me? Hey, Jesus in the flesh, will you deliver me? So watch this here. I don't want to be called Jesus in the flesh. You, you, you understand that I'm your Jesus. You can call me my Jesus on earth or my Jesus or da, da, da. But I don't need to be called Jesus in the flesh because it really, it, it really is not a term that you would call Jesus if he was, you know. If he was on earth, you see what I'm saying? Like you wouldn't say, you, like you would see him and say, my Jesus, you can do that. But you wouldn't say, my Jesus in the flesh. Because <laughs> Jesus would be like, huh? <laughs> I'm in the flesh, what? So, I don't mind people that, that follow me. I don't mind you calling me my Jesus because I am your Jesus. That's how Jesus choose to use me towards you. It's his spirit that has taken me over in this body. I have the spirit of Jesus upon me, within me, through me. And he's using this physical body that you know as prophet Joshua Holmes. He's using this body to talk to you. It's all him. Um, the Lord spoke to me. I was driving into my driveway the other day and he said the reason why. You have a, uh, he said, I let you go through so much stuff because he said, son, you died a long time ago. He said, you've been dead. He said, the life that you live in is the life that I want to live through you. Your decisions are the decisions that I want to make. He said, that's why I don't care what people think. He said, and because you have died, you don't care what they think either. And that's why I use you all the more. He says, not like I can't use another person, but the atmosphere got to be right. 
I don't want to use somebody that's going to pull back on me in certain aspects or they try to keep people in their life and resist me while doing it. I tried you in all of that and you don't care if you lose a wife. You don't care if you lose children. You don't care if you lose family. You don't care if you lose uh, sons, daughters. You don't care about you don't care if you lose mother, um, any of that. You don't care about none of that stuff. You, you, you don't even care if you lose followers or you lose viewers or you lose money. You don't care about none of that stuff. So I've tried you. And because you have proven to me that you don't care about all that, I live a hundred percent in you. One time later, uh, one time later on in my years, well, probably like months ago or something like that, I told Jesus, I said, Jesus, take me over. He said, I can't take you over no more. What you want? You want me to take you home? <laughs> he said, it don't get more raw than you. It don't get more raw than you. If I take you over anymore, I'm just going to have to take you, bring you on the throne and sit you down. So think about it. All these different things that goes on. The reason why the Lord... He picks your man of God. He picks your man of God to be your Jesus. They are there. Like I said, I don't I don't mind you calling me my Jesus. I don't mind you calling me uh, my Jesus. I don't mind that. God doesn't mind that either. Because I am your Jesus. But if you say my Jesus in the flesh, guess what you're going to do? You'll make my eye, eyebrows raise. You know why? Because in the flesh, it's saying it wouldn't be saying that you said if if you was in the day of Mary Magdalene or in the day of uh, uh, Peter. But sure, you're right. They called him my Jesus. Sure, you're right. They call him like I love how everybody in my ministry called me King. I love that. Everybody in my ministry called me king or Lord or master, all that stuff, all that stuff. That's why some of you are ain't you untouchable just like me. And I want some of you all to realize that that you have the same anointing that I have. You often say, well, OK, I want to do the demonstration like he do it or that, that, that. But listen, you miss the main thing. The main thing is that your boldness, your carelessness is at that level. You got that from walking with me, from honoring me. That's one of the major anointings that come from the Holy Ghost being upon you is you shall receive power, which is boldness, which is courage, which is strength, which is fearlessness, which is tenacity, perseverance, diligence, faithfulness. Is the opposite of lukewarmness. That's what you carry. And see, saints, I'm the only ministry in the world where you see so many people call the young king king. I'm the only ministry in the world. Yes, we got foreign ministries where people honor their man of God and stuff like that. But I'm talking about in the prime. <laughs> I don't want you to call somebody that's 50 years old or 60 years old or 70 years old. They are of another generation. I'm talking about I'm the only person in this generation that has people that have the level of honor towards him at such a consistency level. And I'm the only minister that delivers at the pace that I do. Now, we praise God. And glory to God for every other minister that's working for the Holy Spirit. We praise God. I'm talking about what God is doing through JHM. I'm talking about here. I'm talking about here. 
And so saints, always remember that. Keep your honor. 